Greetings. Welcome to the PDF-ID Preferences Tutorial. As all of you are aware of PDF-ID's phenomenal capability in converting PDF and Windows XPS files to editable InDesign files, today we want to show how you can customize PDF-ID to better suit your workflow. Specifically, we want to go over the Preferences panel of PDF-ID. Over the last few years, a lot of users have been asking us whether there were ways to customize PDF to ID so it would better fit their requirements. We've often directed everyone to the preferences panel as that's where you get to customize PDF to ID. So today we're going to talk all about preferences. To get to the preference panel, we need to have the PDF to ID options window open. So what we're going to go do is go to the Recosoft menu and choose the PDF to ID dash convert PDF slash XPS file command. We choose any PDF file to convert and click OK or open. Once the PDF ID options window appears, we see preferences towards the right. Let's click it. As you can see, within the preferences panel, there are a number of different areas that can be customized. What we see here are the general preferences. By clicking the type menu, you notice there also are annotations, color profiles and graphics, default font mappings, formatting options, and others preferences. Let's go over general preferences first as it's already visible. The area that says Converted File Options. You notice that you can specify whether the converted file should have images embedded in the InDesign file or linked to the InDesign file. You also get to specify the destination folder and whether to overwrite a file with the same name. Moving towards the default style and image names, you notice that you can specify the default character style name, paragraph style name, image name, and whether properties should also be added as part of the name. For example, in the case of character styles, a property would be the name and size of the font. PDF ID will automatically append the font name and size if you want it to. For paragraphs, the left and right indentation are properties. For images, the height and width are properties. Towards the end, we have the others area. This allows you to control whether PDF ID should display any helpful tips and whether PDF ID should remember the last used conversion settings. Let's now look at annotation preferences. Here we choose annotations. The annotation preferences allows you to specify the font to use when annotations are recovered. You get to specify for every language a specific font. You also get to specify whether annotations should be put into a separate layer in the result resulting InDesign file and whether annotations should be converted to InDesign notes. And finally, whether to create a separate layer for each annotation author. Now let's switch to color profiles and graphics. Within the color profiles and graphics preferences, you notice you can make profiles and graphics related settings. First, you can specify the RGB profile to use and the CMYK profile to use when color space mappings occur. If you look at the graphics options, you notice you can control the resolution of images that are upsampled. You get to see the resolution of the images over here. Furthermore, you can make PDF to ID provide more information of the image conversions by marking images that have been upsampled, up marking 
fragmented images that have been recombined to form a large image, and marking images that were created from complex vector graphics. Now, let's look at default font mappings. The default font mappings are fonts that PDF to ID automatically maps to when PDF fonts can't be matched to fonts available in your system. You get to define a default font per language or actually per encoding type. Then we have formatting options right over here. And the formatting options allows you to fine tune the conversion fidelity for tables, tables, frames, paragraphs, and styles. You notice that within the table and cell properties area, you get to specify the border type and weight, along with the horizontal justification and vertical justification within the cell. Within the frames linking area, you can control where the frames breaks should be inserted or not. Within the paragraph and cell area, you can specify the default paragraph justification and the accuracy or degree of accuracy for the styles. Finally, we have the others preferences. Within the others preferences, you notice you can specify whether conversion should be recorded into a conversion log. And you can even specify the, desk, the folder where their conversion log should be, should reside. The conversion log is extremely beneficial if you ever want to see a complete list of files you converted using PDF to ID. The conversion log is an ordinary text file that lists the file name and conversion details. Well, that's it with PDF to ID preferences. We know it has a lot of options and it can be very overwhelming, but we hope we were able to help you understand how robust and detailed the preferences are. If you have any questions, please visit us at www.ripplesoft.com. That's www.ripplesoft.com. Thank you.